Oftentimes, tech companies will have a screening process where they ask you questions that you just kind of have to know in order to be considered for a position with them. I decided to create a series that, that covers these like must know questions. And today we are going to start with optionals. So in Swift, and this is actually an advantage of the Swift language, an optional type may or may not hold a value. And this is shown with a question mark. So there are several times where you may use an optional value. For example, um, think about when you fill out a form and some things are required and some things are optional. An optional value could be something that's like nice to have. A good example of this could be like a person class and you know a first name is required a last name is required but maybe their middle name is an optional value so we're going to cover an example of this uh, when you would use it and the different aspects of optional values and how this question in an interview process may look interviewers may ask you what's an optional and put simply an optional value is a swift type that may or may not hold a value. I think the best way to demonstrate this is through an example. So here I'm going to start a new playground. Go ahead and select blank. We're gonna say optionals. So let's say we have a struct that we are calling person. We are going to say var first name, just like I mentioned before, uh, string. Var middle name is a string optional and var last name is a string. Now under this, we're gonna say, let pick a name, pick any name, pick your favorite name of all time. I'm gonna pick Rick. We're gonna say, let Rick equals person. First name, Rick, middle name, nil. Now this means there's no value. So optional may or may not have a value. If it does not, it will be declared nil. Last name, we're gonna say Smith, Rick Smith. Uh, let's change Smith to James because you know why. And if you don't know why, go watch the Chappelle show. So this is Rick James. Uh, we're gonna say print Rick dot middle name. We're gonna hit play. Then in your output, you will see nil. So this is a case where the optional does not have a value. Now, there are several ways to unwrap an optional value to basically check if the value is there. The most dangerous way, never do this. Never do this unless you are absolutely positive. There are times when you can do this and you have to be absolutely positive, but also never do this. There's something called force unwrapping and it is declared with an exclamation point. So now we're gonna say print Rick middle name, Rick dot middle name, uh, forced unwrap. We're forced unwrapping a value that is not there. What do you think is gonna happen? Shit's gonna break. So uh, don't do that. There are other ways to unwrap optional values and here is how we're gonna do it. So the first way to do this is called optional binding. And we're gonna say, Funk, uh, tell me about the person. And then we're gonna pass a person into this function. And all this function's gonna do is print um, first name is, and then we're gonna do string interpolation and we're gonna say person dot first name. Uh, if you've never done string interpolation before, this basically just enters this, whatever's passed in. Here we're saying the first name and it's declared by a forward slash parentheses, whatever value, close parentheses, quote, and then it's, you know, you could put whatever you want in there. Um, I wish this error would go away. Let's run it again, just so it does. I don't like seeing error. All right, so, okay, back to our function. Print, first name is person.firstName. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is say, if let middle is equal to person.middleName. And now what this does, middle is a temporary variable. Whatever, if, if this, uh, if person.middleName has a value, it is now called middle inside of these brackets. So what we're gonna do is the same thing as before, print middle name is forward slash middle because now this is equal to this but if this is nil it will not be run 
which you will see in a second. And then we're going to say print, um, you know, last name is forward slash parentheses person dot last name. So then what we could do is say, uh, tell me about the person, Rick. And all it's going to do is print first name is Rick, last name is Jane. And that's because this does not get executed if there is not a middle name. But if we were to come up here and say middle name, Rick, you know, MFN, middle name is MFN. Maybe I'm a little unprofessional. Let's say Rick Eugene, <laughs> Rick Eugene James. And then we're gonna play this and then, you know, this will get executed. It's basically a safe way to check if there's an optional value or not. Another way you could do this is say if person dot middle name is not equal to nil, you could make this person dot middle name and do the thing I told you to never do and force unwrap it. Because you're you're uh, you know explicitly checking like if this is not nil. Now I know it's not nil inside the brackets. But I like the other way better if let's, you know, or just better. We're going to change this back to nil for old Rick. Okay, so that is called, we just learned uh, optional binding. When you think optional binding, I want you to think if let statement. Okay, so another example I want to show you, let's say we have another person, let's call him Bob. Let Bob is equal to person. Uh, first name Bob, middle name F, uh, Frank, Lynn, uh, Smith, because that's a super uncommon name. And then we're going to make another function. We're going to say func get middle name. And we're going to pass a person of type person. And then we're going to draw a nice cute little arrow that passes a string back. But what we're going to do is make this string optional. So if the middle name is optional, the string, um, this is basically saying we're going to try to pass a string back, but we're not guaranteeing anything. So another way to safely check optional values or to check anything, like if something is equal to something else, if something dot count is enough, uh, depending on the situation, is through guard statements. Now a guard statement basically saves you time because it's saying, hey, if this isn't true, don't even execute the function, typically. What we're gonna say is guard let middle, it's equal to person dot middle name, else return nil. So that's saying execute this first because it is first, but guard is essentially always first in a function. Uh, we're going to declare this variable middle and we're going to set it equal to person dot middle name. And if that's nil, we're just returning nil for the whole function. We're not going to waste our time. Then all we're really doing here is saying return middle. Okay. So say we do, you know, print get middle name person Bob. So it's passing uh, Franklin, but you can see that it is optional. Another way we could do this is set this string to definitely return a string. We could say let has middle name of type Boolean values equal to person dot middle name is not equal to nil. So this is a Boolean saying true or false, this person has a middle name. Then we could do um, return, this is called a ternary operator. And the ternary operator is dictated by another question mark, not to confuse it with the optional question mark, but it's basically a way of saying if and else. So return has middle name, if true, question mark space, the space is important, person dot middle name, and then a colon um, declares the false part. So if not, then we're gonna say no middle name. Now we can say, We're gonna have to, um... yeah, so we're gonna have to add an exclamation point here doing the thing I never said to do. 
But basically what this line on 31 is saying, return person.middle name if has middle name is true. If not, return no middle name. Okay, Franklin. And since it's force unwrapped, you don't see that optional aspect that you saw last time. So we're gonna comment all of this out. All these print statements. Um, just to clean up our output. And the last thing I wanna show you is called optional chaining. What optional chaining basically means is like, when you have something that may or may not be nil, Oftentimes that has properties and subscripts and functions under it that may not execute if that property is nil. So with that, uh, here's an example of like optional chaining. You know, since middle name is optional in the person structure, we could do, you know, let first letter is equal to Bob dot middle name dot first and it'll automatically, I did not type this question mark, it'll automatically add it there. So this is an example of optional chaining. So that's typically what interviews will cover in terms of optionals. Uh, I do feel like this is a must know thing because a lot of times companies have like a weeding out process and it'll be in like the first round where you need to be able to talk about these things confidently. So just to recap very quickly, an optional is something that may or may not have a value. And to check, you may use optional binding. You can um, force unwrap, which you should never do, but there's guard statements, there's if let statements, and then there's just this simple like checking if this is nil or not. And then you have your ternary operator that is basically the shortened version of an if something is true, um, execute this. If not, it's the colon, execute this if false. So there's lots of ways to do it. I find myself using if let the most. And um, yeah, stay away from the forced unwrapping because your app will crash if there's a value that sh is expected there and it is not actually there. Follow along for more. I will be posting a few more of these like must know um, iOS interview pieces. So yeah, thanks for watching.